Hi everyone. Well, today I'm eventually going to get around to dealing with my um, geraniums. They're actually called pelagoniums, but everybody calls them geraniums. So my name's Diane and I live up here in the northeast of England, right on the coast. So um, we don't actually ha sort of use zones in the UK, but someone asked me the other day and I looked it up um, and they class the whole of the UK as zone 9A. So anyway, these geraniums are not frost hardy. So it's a right raggedy bunch that I have here. I'll show you um, in a minute. So they go from ones that aren't too bad to ones which are actually sort of heaving themselves out of the pots there, you can see that, to, to ones which look like that, um, which has been beautiful, um, to some ivy leaf trailing geraniums that I have, which I'm not going to bring into the greenhouse because they're covered in sticky white fly, so I don't want that bug brought into the greenhouse at all. So I'm going to deal with these today. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do and I'll talk about sort of my struggles over the years to keep geraniums alive over the winter, the different methods that I've used. So I haven't actually planned this or thought this through. It's all these geraniums have been in my conservatory and every day they sort of look more and more dejected. Um, and I know I've killed a lot of geraniums in the past when February now I once watered all my geraniums um, in January and the whole lot died. So I'm very wary about giving them a drink of water. But anyway, I'll sort of talk as I work and um, it'll be a train of thought as to what I do with them. Right, so the first ones that I'm going to do, I'm going to go, I'm going to do the easiest ones first that I can see. Um, so these ones here, these lovely white ones, you can see the flowers are going over. Um, the soil is dry. It's sort of come away from the side of the pot, but it's not too bad. What I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to pick off all of the yellowing leaves first, the dead ones and the yellowing leaves. And what, um, what I want to end up with is a nice, short, bushy geranium. Take all the flowers off this one. Take that leaf off there. And this one isn't too bad. It's, it's quite a short, nice, bushy plant. There's no fly on it. It's not diseased. Um, so that one is done. Um, and when I've done all of these, I'm going to take them back in the, to my conservatory. So that one's done. So I'll do one that looks really bad now. And I know it's alive because there's still green on it and there's flowers. So all I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to cut it right you see some of these stems are quite mushy at the base my mother used to love geraniums and she told me she said if you cut into a stem and there's the least bit life there then don't give up on the plant just leave it and it will spring to life some of these stems i know are completely dead sort of soft and mushy. see that one's really mushy there this doesn't look healthy at all So that's it. I'm going to give that one a fighting chance, but I'm not going to water it. I don't think I'll water these until March. Right, now these ones I've been quite anxious about. They are a beautiful deep pink geranium and they're not mine. They're my sister Shirley's um, and she just didn't have room in her house to keep them. So these plants here, all these deep pink ones, lived in pots outside her house. Um, 
so at the end of the summer last year, I said, well, I'll take them and I'll put them in my conservatory um, and keep them alive. And it's the first year, even though they look really bad, it's the first year that all these geraniums have survived. Um, I'm going to take you around to my late father-in-law's greenhouse who used to live around the corner, I still use the greenhouse, and I've overwintered some geraniums there. So I'll show you, we can compare then these geraniums, which have lived over winter with no water in an unheated conservatory, but it was double glazed, and we'll compare them to a greenhouse which is unheated, and I've had the windows open sort of 99% of the time, the windows and the doors, everything in there is sort of um, had the brunt of the winter weather. Right, so um, again, I want these to be as healthy as possible for her. They aren't in a particular, they're not in a multi-purpose compost because when I took them out of the pots at her house, um, I just put them in garden soil and it seems to have worked absolutely fine. So, let me see if I'm getting in with, I should have my snips here. So I'm looking for any kind of bug, but I did look for them before I brought them into my greenhouse because what I don't want is any little white fly getting into this greenhouse. Um, so I'm going to take the flowers off. Now, I think going forward that this is fine. I don't want to cut that down too much, but this one is very leggy down here. And you see that looks better already. I only have to sort of look after them for, I would say, another probably six, seven weeks. Keep them alive. Maybe put them out in the garden through the day or something. But I think she'll be delighted with that. Um, now... You could just throw all these away, but I could get cuttings off these, and I'm sure Shirley won't mind me taking some cuttings. Um, so I'm going to get a little pot. And I'm going to put some multi-purpose compost in it. Um, and then I was looking for my bag of very fine grit, because when you take cuttings, that works best. Um, I'll show you the type of grit that I was looking for. I've done the tops of my pots with them. I would normally um, mix that in with that. In fact, I don't know whether to take some off. I think I'll take some off the top, actually, rather than the vermiculite. Right. These are Tulip Brisbane that I'm waiting um, for them to poke their head up above the soil. Right, I'm just going to mix this together and then put it back in there because it has to be really free draining for cuttings. And I'm just going to be very quick here. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut it there. So I've got one little leaf, put him at the side there side of the pot and then I'm going to cut the other one there. Right, I've made a right mess. I'm doing with my snips. You need a nice clean cut. So I'm going to take that leaf off because you want to take all the strain off the little cutting. Yeah, put that there and then we can take some of these leaves off here. There we go. Because all I want these to do is to make some roots. I'll check the bottom of the pot. Um, make some roots. And then as soon as I can see roots coming out the bottom of the pot, I'll separate these little plants. And um, I'll have three more plants like that. I'll put a bit more compost in the middle there. And that's what I'm going to do. And, and then I'll water them. I might actually water them and put them on 
um, my heated mat in the conservatory. Right, here's another one that doesn't look too bad. Again, take all the strain off. Take any de dead leaves off. So I think he's okay. So yes, I was saying, um, over the years I've tried everything. I've even tried the cardboard box technique. Um, so that is where you would take a geranium like that, you take it out of the soil, so you expose its roots. You cut all the flowers off um, and you put them, when they're dry, in a cardboard box. And I had piles of cardboard boxes with all my geraniums. I think I must have had 30 geraniums. You seal them in a cardboard box and then once a month over the winter, you open them up, check that they're not going mouldy. And then apparently in the spring, you repot them up and they all spring to life and the whole lot died. I kept them in a hut. Um, so yeah, I lost them. And then I thought, right, the next year, I'm just gonna keep them all in the cold greenhouse around the corner. So I did that, took pity on them in January um, because they looked like this. So I gave them a trim down as I'm doing now, but then I watered them and within a week, every single one died. So I think just the temperatures plummeted and um, and yeah, they just froze. So with this one here, I'm gonna take the obvious dead bits off. I think this has gone a bit leggy. Um, I'm gonna cut that off and I'm gonna cut that off and then I'll cut where this one is coming out there, I'm going to cut down to there. In fact, I think with this one, that looks a really sort of sickly looking stem. It's got a, a bit broken there and this is dead. So I'm going to cut that right down to the bottom there. And you can see how healthy that cut is there. So yeah, I think that looks so much better. Take that off there take that leaf off i don't need i don't need loads of ger more geraniums the thing is i've done it in the past i take loads of geranium cuttings and then i love buying them so i buy loads more as well and i end up with tons of them and then i don't know what to do with them um when it comes to the winter because i haven't got the room to keep them in my house So they all have to go into the concert and they end up looking like this. You know, my mother used to have, she used to have lots of geraniums, but she never had the number of plants that, that I've got. There weren't the garden centers around then. Um, so she would have her favorite geraniums and she'd take one or two cuttings off them. And, but they stayed on the windowsills in our house um so consequently it was a much more sort of temperate climate for them and i know the problem i've got with my conservatory is because i grow so many plants in there i use it as a sort of intensive care unit for plants that need nurturing i've got citrus trees in there um, I used to have my big tree fern in there, um, but then I almost lost him one year because we also use it as a TV in there, the, the grandchildren play in there. Um, so the central heating would be on and the tree fern hated it. It just all died off. So I thought, right, next year I'm not going to heat it up unless the baby comes and wants to play. And I think therein lies my problem because it warms up nicely through the day, the baby's playing with it. When the baby goes home, we turn the heating off or it just cools down. So it's full of all these plants in a very moist atmosphere. Um, so I think if I'd ventilated it more, it would have been better. Um, so now that it's not as freezing cold, I've been opening two of the windows and it's much, it's a much 
more pleasant atmosphere in there. But um, but yeah, I think that's that's what's happened with a lot of these geraniums. They just haven't liked that closed up sort of damp atmosphere. Right, like I say, I don't need all of these. Now that is a huge long leggy stem. I mean, look at that, all the way up there before you actually get to any flowers. So I'm gonna cut that there. I'm gonna cut him down there. This one, I think I am actually gonna cut it right at the bottom there, like that. Cut him down there, and him there. I've actually got a little bulb that must have been in one of our tubs and that growing in here. Right, I'm starting to feel better about these now anyway. I was really worried in case I had to say, oh, surely all of your geraniums have died. She's so lovely, she would have said. Never mind. Um, right, so I'll show you these ones next. Um, so I bought an array of these ones, and, and these are really grown for their foliage rather than the flower, although the flower was pretty as well. So that is beautiful. This one has gone lovely over the winter, but it's during the summer, it's been that green leaf with that red circle around it. And then there's that one, and I think I've got another one. Yes, this one. Um, but can you see what's happening with these? They're sort of, they've been grown in little plugs in those bags. Now I was talking about these in a video earlier on, and they're supposed to sort of, be biodegradable and the roots come out but this is what happens um the roots can't get out they've got down but because i can tell he's quite firm but they haven't got out i really don't like these little bags um so this stem here has gone mushy we'll get rid of that And then you just put your fingers in and pull out all the, the dead foliage. Right, I'm going to get a pot ready for this one because I'm going to um, I'm going to take some. Do I take cuttings off that? Yeah. I'll get a pot ready for this one. I must go and get another bag of gravel tomorrow. Actually, you know what? I'm going to tip that in there and I'm going to put some vermiculite in with it. So this is vermiculite. It just helps your drainage. Mix it up like cake mix. Tip it in that pot. Right, because I want to take I want him to go nice and bushy. This is brutal, isn't it? <laughs> So there are my cuttings. Now, because I'm completely repotting this one, I am going to give this one a drink. Like I say, these are all going back into the conservatory and I'll be able to keep an eye on them. And because we're in February now, um, they will come out of their dormant state. Right, he looks a bit of an odd shape, but I'll show you in a few weeks' time. He'll probably get a lot of new leaves. Well, this is what I'm hoping for. A lot of new leaves coming from all these stems. So 
this one's really sorry for itself poor little thing I mean look at that so I'm going to take the bag off I'm going to cut you know I'm just going to cut this one right down maybe leave those few leaves on there so I'm going to cut them right down to there put him in some new compost Oh, these are going to be so happy. My conservatory is going to look a lot better. These have been on my mind for ages, but I just have never made the time to, well, I've never prioritised them. I've always prioritised something else. You could, if you had some rooting powder, dip the the cut stem into the rooting powder um, and that would help them root as well but um, I think these will be fine the way they are right so this will be something else for me to look after hopefully keep alive and have them um, and I'll show you in a couple of weeks time right so um, you get the general gist I'm just going to carry on work my way through all these geraniums and get them into sort of the best condition possible and then take them all back into the conservatory where I can sort of keep an eye on, on them on a daily basis um, so um, I'll take you around to the greenhouse I'll show you the geraniums round there Right, so I'll show you some of the uh, geraniums that I've been overwintering in this cold greenhouse that used to belong to my father-in-law. So, not looking great. And I haven't watered these this year. Um, the stem still feels... Um, quite healthy on this even though the leaves are completely brown so I've got high hopes for that one um, I thought the ones in my conservatory look be draggled until until I've really had a good look at these ones have I got any more here so that one's still definitely alive because there's still colour in the leaves even though it doesn't look particularly well Right, this is another geranium. Back to the geraniums. Now, he was looking good up until a couple of weeks ago. I think I'll take him round home and put him in the conservatory. Um, and then over here, see we've got broken panes of glass in the greenhouse. And we've had horrific storms. Right, again, the stems here aren't feeling too mushy, so... Um, I'm hoping that these geraniums are dormant. Now I used to have um, hanging baskets full of geraniums that hung over my little balcony outside the conservatory door. And what I did with those was, well I'll show you, I've, I've put them at the back of my father-in-law's garage. Right, so these geraniums here have a look oh these are much much better so again you see the stems are very brown but there's new growth at the bottom and what I did was um, I just took the whole root ball out of the basket so that is the shape that the baskets were well they're troughs really that the troughs were and I thought, right, we'll try it this way. Run, take each geranium out individually and try and keep it alive. Put it in new potting mix. I'll just leave it where it was. This straggly stuff here is just for copa, which some people say it does come back. So I'll just give this for copa a haircut and 
the whole lot of water in about, oh, I don't know, six to eight weeks time when the weather starts to warm up and they will just get plopped back into my troughs and we'll see how they do. But um, yes, I've got high hopes for these. So I've got one, two, three large troughs worth of geraniums and they were beautiful and this is the small gothic shaped trough that hangs on my gothic shaped gate which goes into the back courtyard um and then i've obviously got oh these were these geraniums are from my sister shirley's house again you can see they're alive very mildewy I might actually come in and give these um, a cut back in the next week. I won't water them because I don't want to break their dormancy. But um, I think I will cut all that dead foliage back. But these do look better than the ones that have been in the extremely cold greenhouse. Because I'll shut the door in the garage. And I'll show you, they've still had plenty light. That is west facing. So they've had light, um, but they've been kept bone dry since the end of the summer. Um, but it's obviously that is a double glazed unit there and brick walls as opposed to panes of glass in the greenhouse and metal. So that little bit more heat has have kept them a bit healthier. So I've cleaned my sills down. So it's a perfect time for the geraniums to be in the conservatory, sort of February, March, because that is still too early really for the um, my house plants to come in here. So I'm gonna put them on the sills. So my windows are open, just a gap there. And I'm just going to go around and put all the geraniums on the window sills, um, giving them plenty space in between them now, because obviously they're not as big. I haven't watered these ones. I'll just keep an eye on them. There. This one is a lovely one. It's a little rose scented geranium and he's lovely and bushy anyway. Again, very much on the dry side there. He didn't need any attention. This one over there. And I think this is going to be the secret to success. Um, plenty of ventilation and plenty of space in between them. I think I'll keep this one over there so it, the sun sort of comes round this way and um, that's that's east and that's south down there so that will encourage growth here and I just bought these lovely new pots see I must have known I was going to do this right again I'm going to turn the thickest part of the plant away from the sun so that it'll bush out nicely and I'll just keep turning the plants. That one there. So yeah, they look great. So yes, the verdict is if you've got space in your house or in your conservatory to keep your geraniums um they definitely fare better than keeping them either in a garage or in in a cold greenhouse so i feel much better about these plants now so that's my geranium sorted for another year. Um, I must say I feel a lot more positive this year than I ever have in previous years. Um, I feel like I sort of know what I'm doing now, hopefully. <laughs> so thank you again for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Bye.